Three, two, one. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Welcome to 321 Liftoff. I'm Wayne Belden, the president of Belden Communications, the publisher of the Space Coast Fun Guide and SpaceCoastFunGuide.com. We'll be bringing you 321 Liftoff each week, talking about tourism on Florida's fabulous Space Coast. With me is the host of 321 Liftoff, Bonnie King, former deputy director of the Space Coast Office of Tourism, as well as the past president of the Florida Film Commission. Bonnie, are we ready to blast off on 321 Liftoff? We are hey. ready. How's everybody All right. doing? Everybody good? Drinks oh, yeah, coming. man. Drink. We're and here. So we are. Much. We are. And spring is in the air. I can feel it. The energy is here. We are starting to see more and more visitors to our area and to our hotels and our restaurants. And it's beginning to be like spring. And today we have two special guests with us who have been with us before. We had the executive director of the Space Coast Office of Tourism, Peter Cranus, who's gonna join us. And we also have our favorite environmentalist, Laura Lee Thompson, who has worked for decades on many issues related to commercial fisheries, Thank water you. quality, the Indian River Lagoon, and tourism to not only the Space Coast, but also to Florida. 321 Liftoff is brought to you in part by the Beachside Hotel in Cocoa Beach, which is where we are today. And we're overlooking the Lazy River and watching all these visitors here. They're sunning themselves and enjoying the ambiance of this fabulous hotel on Florida Space Coast. And joining me today in this tourism conversation, of course, is John Belden, Vice President of Belden Communications. Hey. Hey, Bonnie. How you doing? As usual, you are right. A spring is in the air, and we know that many of our listeners to this podcast still have one foot stuck in the winter, and they wish for sunshine, warm weather, and all the activities that have come to enjoy here on the Space Coast. Uh, so as we have said before, Cocoa Beach Air Show with Thunderbirds is coming April 17th and April 18th. We're all excited about that. Yep. And Thunder on the Cocoa Beach, which is offshore powerboat racing, returns May 20th through May 23rd. Again, another exciting event. We're glad to have it back. Um, looking forward to that one for sure. So as I was saying to my dad, Wayne Belden, President of Belden Communications, spring fever has hit the Space Coast. Oh, boy, has it. Boy, <laughs> here we are. And I'm just thinking of our friends and listeners in uh, up northern states. Uh, you're dealing probably with still some cold weather. And we're down here right next to the Lazy River. Temperature's got to be around 80 degrees, and it's sunny. Beautiful. And uh, we have a fabulous weather all year long. Look, just look around. Look at everybody smiling. You I can know. see it. I'm uh, loving it. Uh, people are laughing, celebrating. You know, uh, We've got more hours of daylight, and people on vacation are in a great mood. They're free from work, uh, from home, from work. And sun is begging us to take a play day. And take a play day, right. And speaking of play day, we have two people here that took a play day from work to be with <laughs> us today. And we want to welcome both Peter and Laura Lee. Thank you guys for being here. Happy Friday, right? Happy Friday. So you feel the spring air? You guys got smiles on your face? We, we are feeling it. It's spring break. And, uh, you, you know, that's a fantastic thing here on the Space Coast. Is there's so much to do and so much to see. And... Just a lot of fun to be had, so we're, we're excited about it. March is really, uh, I feel like we've turned a corner here. I love it. And you're seeing some um, some input and some more people coming up to the restaurant? Absolutely, yeah. Um, and then we just got in another boatload of royal red shrimp. So oh, the yeah. royal red shrimp. Yeah. We love that. That's yeah. it. You can smell it. We <laughs> love that. There, there's something in the air, isn't there? You get an extra little step at this time of year, and with spring break, I, like you said, we've kind of turned a corner, and, and I, I feel it, the looks, the, you see the visitors here back in town, and behind us we have Duck Dive Bar here at Beachside Hotel and Suites, and that drink just tastes a little better, right? So I'll have to take me yeah, a little. Mine tastes I, good, I know that. A little Coca-Cola will do us some good. So tell us what's happening, Peter, with tourism. I know that you guys have a new marketing campaign out. We do. So maybe you can fill us in on that? Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, we uh, took a step back uh, in the fall, uh, brought on a new ad agency, and uh, kind of looked at what our branding was and how we were positioning ourselves. And uh, we, did, we did some consumer research, and you know what, what we learned was there's so many great uh, cities and great areas in the, on the Space Coast, and people know them. They know Cape Canaveral, they know Cocoa Beach. So how do we incorporate that in with the name of Space Coast? So the idea came out to say, well, why don't we, why don't we just do the very thing that, that uh, is most obvious and combine them and say, Cocoa Beach on the Space Coast, Melbourne on the Space Coast. So you'll see our ads have, have these mm -hmm. focuses on these different areas. And it, can, it, it could be more than just cities. It could be 
you know, uh, Playa Linda on the Space Coast. It could be, you know, names of beaches, names of museums. So we're, we're going around and everybody's very excited about it. Um, the campaign shows what we're known for, which is launches and space and rockets, but it also combines that with whatever the min you, happens in those municipalities. So you see beaches combined with the space. You'll see a surfboard and a, and a, and a rocket paired up, or you'll see a kayak uh, like in Titusville paired up with a rocket. Very unique. Um, or you see so the, the, the giraffe the and giraffe the, the length the of the giraffe's neck and right. then the bottom part is, is like the, a is rocket. rocket. Yeah. <laughs> So I, I really cool. thought that was very clever how yeah. they all they mixed all that together because you're right it does it says the zoo on the space coast it says kayaking on the space coast so um yeah you guys did a good job they, i really like it it looks Thanks. good yeah well, no, we love it and and so um we just launched a campaign about two two three weeks ago uh we're deep into it now of course we're right in the middle of you know spring breaks happening uh it'll keep on going through uh easter's the first weekend of april it'll go past that so you know we're we're right in our our core season and uh, from what i can tell driving around Cocoa beach and, and other beach towns and people are yeah. here you know people are showing up so we're, we're excited about that absolutely we love that very much so what about how, what's happening with you over at the restaurant and not only the restaurant but also environmentally i know that today you were out counting Horseshoe crabs? Well, technically there were no <laughs> horseshoe crabs today, but I'm, I'm a volunteer with uh, Florida's Linked with Limulus program. So we're citizen scientists. We go out and we do surveys at specific times and gather data for the scientists that are studying horseshoe crabs. So I had a new volunteer this morning, and she brought her three-year-old daughter with her. So oh, we, wow. we had a lot of fun. Starting, Starting young. young. Yeah, yeah. 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 Started so young. I love it. Yeah, and, and it was gorgeous out along the shoreline along the Titusville Causeway. Just spectacular. Yeah. Oh, and that. So we're doing good at the restaurant. You know, we, we got a lot of visitors coming in. And what's really cranking up is the kayaking up in the north end of the lagoon. Oh, so man. they're they're finishing up with the comb jelly season and getting ready to uh, waiting for the bioluminescence to start that, that is it. my favorite favorite thing to do and, and you're yeah, is me too. no other site in, in Titusville that's where it has it the best um you you go down the water the first time I saw that literally it was something I out of the movies you would think and it, it was absolutely incredible you just want to dip your hand in the water and in the mosquito lagoon we went out there I go every year with the chamber absolute blast and the things that you can see in there it's that's a that's that's one of those things that's like a miracle of nature, right? You have yeah. to yes, it is. Yeah, it's yep. it's a it's a once in a lifetime experience. If you've never been yep. somewhere where they have bioluminescence, it only happens in a in a very few areas around the country, um, and you know it is. It's just really incredible to see that. Um, I I went actually I went on my birthday um, la, uh, two August ago, and um, I made the mistake. I we, of course it's at night, so you can't really see where you're going. And they told me, they said, if you hit a manatee accidentally yeah. who's sleeping, he's going to wake up and he's going he's gonna to go a little crazy. And I, you know, I was like, okay, well, I'll try to avoid them. But you can't you see can't them because the yeah. water's, until you put your oar in the, in, the, uh, in the water, you really can't see anything. So, uh, of course, I was the one out of my group. I was the one to hit a manatee. You hit the manatee. Uh. And I, I did what they call the manatee rodeo, which is you just hold on for dear <laughs> life. <laughs> As it thrashes and, you know, he's... How many he's, seconds did you get? Uh, I think I got about I got about eight and I got soaked, but it was good all job. fun. It was very good. Good <laughs> it job. Great, it was yep. a great time. He was okay. I mean, I, yeah, it, it scares him. It doesn't hurt him. It, it just yeah. scared him And because I wasn't going fast at all. He might have thought you wanted to play. I, maybe he did. You know? But that's something did. out of, like, Avatar. You've seen the movie Avatar. Yes. It really is. This neon green... I don't know. I lost my phone the first time I went. <laughs> I, I did. It, 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 I, uh, I, I, it was pitch dark, and I thought that I had a... Uh, 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 I thought a stick dropped or something out of the canoe, and I felt something. And I chucked it, and when I <laughs> went back after the thing was over, I went looking for my phone. I threw my phone into the into the room. Why don't Why don't we do this? <laughs> why don't because we're skirting all around it. Yeah. Laura Lee, describe exactly what this bioluminescence tour is. What What happens? Well, bioluminescence is caused from um, dinoflagellates in the water. These are little small um, organisms that they're like a firefly, and they give off light, you know, in, in response to being disturbed or getting scared. So when you, you know, when your bow of your boat's going through the water, slicing through the water, 
you have this wake, you know, this V-shaped wake on both sides of the front of your kayak, and every stroke of the paddle makes a green explosion in the water. If you um, bang your paddle into a comb jelly, comb jellies are also bioluminescent, so you get a big explosion of green light. So that should be a goal? And the fish are going crazy. The mullet are running in front of the boat. They look like bottle rockets screaming out from underneath your boat. And dolphins, if you're lucky enough to have a dolphin come by, sometimes I've seen it where the bioluminescence was so intense that when the dolphin ex- exhaled, it actually sprayed bioluminescence out of the blowhole Are you of the serious? dolphin. Wow. And, and, and to, wow. Yeah. Video Beautiful. footage of that? Yeah. Nice. Nice. And, yeah. and, 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 the, and, the, uh, and the dolphins, of course, make a lot of bioluminescence when they're racing by. Sometimes they'll, they'll just run right next to the kayaks. And the, the manatees, if, you, if they're down deep in the water... They look like big ghosts underneath <laughs> underneath your kayak. Oh, awesome. <laughs> so that could be a good thing too for Halloween if it was still going on. Unfortunately, it wouldn't be, but that that's that's wow. I know, but you paint Incredible. a very you paint a right? very yeah. good picture. Yeah, she oh, did a much better job of describing it than I could. <laughs> hey, I just are you riding a manatee? Yeah, exactly. Right. That, was, that was my. my I like that manatee rodeo. That's a that's a pretty uh, pretty good way to put it. But we also want to mention that Michelle Martindale has joined us at the table here and for the tourism conversation, and she's with the Beachside Hotel. So welcome and join the conversation. We're glad that you are here now i know you've been kayaking with bioluminescence i have i i, yeah. my, I have two kayaks so i, I try oh. and slip out and yeah into really? the Indi- uh, banana river and uh go out and find some peace actually so nice and quiet and the mangroves beautiful. are pretty up here they right? are they yeah. are yeah well the, the nice thing nice about the north end of the lagoon is you're in the middle of the space center you're literally in the middle of the kennedy space yep. center and there's no lights there's no yeah. light pollution right. there's yep. You, you have a few faint lights out, you know, that are by the launch pads on the Space Center and nothing but stars. It's it's incredible. It's beautiful. And Isn't if you it? can get out there during a launch, right? I was going to say, oh, yeah. i, I, oh, I got to yeah. imagine a night launch has got to be just incredible. Yeah. The, light, you know, the, the night sky just lights up. Even when we're, you know, 10, 15 miles away, yep. it lights up the sky. So imagine being right there in the on the water. A couple of miles out. That's that's no better amazing. place. Yeah. But speaking of night Not launches, only that, though, you you can feel the the water shaking, uh, yeah. you know, through your legs and, yeah. and and through you know under your butt. You can you can actually yep. feel that vibration of the wow. rocket launch. It's, it's incredible. Yep. Well, speaking of night launches, we had one the other night. I don't know if any of you were awake. It, it happened like three o'clock three in the, the morning. morning yeah. It woke me up. I I it absolutely woke me up. My house was shaking, yeah. and I went, "Oh, I didn't realize it was leaving that early." I, so I uh, had a house in Titusville for quite some time, and one one of the launches it was a day launch, but it was on the weekend, and the launch goes off, and then my my daughter says, uh, "Daddy, Daddy, come in here," and she had on her ceiling fan underneath the light fixture was like the four different light bulbs it broke one of the bulbs the vibration was that <laughs> wow strong. and you know you can only imagine the days of the shuttle yeah but but it does when the rocket goes off especially if it's a heavy like the delta heavy that whole that whole house shakes you talk about the the shuttle the apollo launches were way better yeah. i mean way more way more noise way more smoke and fire wow. really and they actually the broke windows in the really? houses in Titusville. and yeah. we're we're looking at it at that again you yeah know, when, i was going to say the, yeah. it's the, coming the, new, back. the, the new, new lunar launch system is incredible yeah. they were just talking about it's a 32 stories high rocket oh my gosh and wow. it is, you it's going to it's going to be Can bigger than the, than the shuttle Wow. Uh, and I think uh, as big, if not bigger, than Apollo. So it's going to be incredible when those go up. Wow. Yep. Uh, huge. And, and Trying to imagine that. And they're, they're going to be selling <laughs> at some point, too, where, where, where you can buy a ticket on these things, right? And start and going out? Yeah, I mean, space tourism Soon. is a thing. Uh, I don't know that it's you know going to be around the corner necessarily, but down the road, I, there, there are people who are very wealthy who are already uh, purchasing spots on SpaceX's uh, well, uh, Dragon capsule. So, yeah, and we may see some of those launches in the next year or so. It's been on my Christmas list for a while. Dad, okay. Dad would <laughs> mind. No, you can't collect, have all. Collect your pennies. <laughs> no. No. Say, have you been a good boy for it? No. Does Santa Claus know? Yeah, let, let's Santa know I want to go yeah. ride on a rocket. Yeah. 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 I, w- I want to say there's a good heavy six-figure, if not seven-figure uh, number oh, behind that. So true. you might... 
Yeah. Money to no. save their pennies F- for a while. Finance plan of, a, what is 100000 a month or something? <laughs> well, the other great thing is that we have so many launches now that are scheduled. And so people who are coming yeah. in here for vacation, many of them, they don't even realize mm-hmm. that, oh, by the way, do you know that tonight there's a launch? So it's real exciting for them because they had no idea. So they come here on vacation, and there you go. There it is. And, Peter, I know that you have a, a launch site that people can go on and get educated about what rocket launches are going to happen yeah. when, and also gives you a little history of what their payload is and what they're doing. Right, and can you can you download. Us- sure, and you can download the app. It's you know it's very easy to uh, to go right on uh, either your Google or Apple Store, launch. and just it's called Launch Console, and um, you download that, and it has all the upcoming launches. It has a description, like you said, of what's going up and what the mission is, um, and then when you're when it's actually activated. Um, there's a little uh, GPS. Uh, GPS that points where you're, where the rocket in the sky, where, you, where to so look. So that you can go look. So you can yeah. actually yeah. See yeah. It. I, I have it on my phone yeah. right now. I, yeah. That's one of my go-tos. Okay, when is it coming up? Yeah. Oh, yep. They slid yeah. it again. They slid but, it again. But that's yeah. my favorite part because you literally you position yourself and yep. say, all right, right there. Yep. And, you know, my wife would always get on to me because I'm directionally challenged. You know, I'm thinking that north is here, but it's behind me. And so I think I know where the rocket's going. And you use that app, and you go, oh, my gosh, no, it's completely the other direction. Right, right. So it's, it really is an awesome app. I encourage, I encourage everybody to download that yeah. um, and, and launch console. I and, think, and, yeah. And, and, and the regular web, website is spacecoastlaunches.com. And right. it's great, too. Yeah, it is. yeah the yeah, website's it is. excellent, and you can link from the website to the app and, and download it from there, or you can just look at the website itself and, it, and it's got a lot of good information on it. In fact, we had we were the number one launch destination in the world last year, but more than Russia, more than China, uh, any other location in the U.S. And that's going to continue this year. There's some major launches. There's the there's the uh, Crew Dragon again going up at least twice, if not three times. Um, and then there's some talk down the road later in the year uh next year about possibly tom cruise coming oh. and and going to the international space station to, to film a movie, a movie yeah. yep. and if that happens you know everybody's, oh, everybody's going to want to see that bonnie really? will be in line right bonnie oh, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> bonnie has his <laughs> yeah. phone number probably sure oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah former yeah. film commissioner bonnie, right bonnie. you know what's Definitely. great too peter is that you have all this new technology that you've brought in to the office of tourism uh, not only for this launch console and you do it but i think one of the most one of the most interesting things that I really enjoyed hearing about is how you can monitor where people are coming from through their phones. Right. Can you give a little description of sure. that? Because that's I'm, really yeah, interesting. And I'm going to preface it with, um, it, you know, for people that always get concerned about privacy, we, we look at cellular data, but we don't know individual information, right? So we just know, we don't know Joe Smith is here, right. but we know somebody is here from Washington or from New York or from Georgia and and that information really helps us because it talk tells us where should we be you know sending our messages out to say hey you know people like you are coming to our area why don't you come down and so that that's a it's a great tool uh, when we have events, it really helps us because you know a, a lot of the the more public events it's very hard to count people and right. understand how what your attendance is. But we can go out there and um, and basically just use our cellular uh, device information, and we can tell you how many people were here, how many people came from outside of the county, and and where where were they from, and so it's a, it's a it's really good information from a marketing perspective, and it helps the consumer because then we can give them the information that they're interested in. Right. I think there's a great segue here because I know that you have grants that you give out yeah. to people in Brevard County. We do. Um, there's sports grants and there's also um, cultural, cultural grants that right. are given out. And it's interesting because you you know you want to get a return on investment. You want to know that maybe somebody's coming in from out of town to see this event. And because of this cellular activity that you have, I just saw a report from your office that kind of showed um, AirSage shows where these people are coming from. Is AirSage the? Yeah, they're this? they're the uh, they're the data collection company. Okay. There's a there's a lot of companies yeah. that do it, but our our partnership is with them. Um, and yes, we give we give away hundreds of thousands of dollars in grant money. Uh, in fact, you mentioned er- <coughs> excuse me you mentioned earlier the uh, the two uh, the air show. There's actually two air shows, and I'll talk about those in yeah. a second. Yep, but yep. the air show in Cocoa Beach, they they reached out to us and we gave them a nice grant, yes. and uh, that's going to allow them to, to to have their event in April. But there's also a show in Melbourne in May, 
and, uh, and, and they're gonna probably get a grant as well. And you know what's cool about the, the two air shows is one of them, the Cocoa Beach show has the Thunderbirds, which is, you know, of course, right. an amazing demo team. Air Force. And the Air yeah. Force, go Air, Air Force. Force. And, then, uh, and then Melbourne has the Blue Angels, which is the Navy, Navy. demo team. That's great. They're the two top demo teams yes. in the world. Right. Um, and I found out, uh, the, you're, you'll like this if you're an aircraft aficionado, um, the, thun the uh, Blue Angels are flying a new aircraft for the first time in probably 20 years. Uh, it's an FA-18, uh, so it's going to be uh, an incredible aircraft, and it, it can apparently do things that, that they couldn't do before. So uh, I think those two shows are going to be amazing. They're bringing it to the Space Coast. And, it, you know, what nowhere place. else, in, I, I don't know anywhere else in the world that has two Both. air shows right. of, of that caliber, right. yep. you know, with... with you know, th those demo teams, so... Uh, it says something about the destination, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, you know, we're, we're patriots down here, so, we, you know, we love our military, yes, and we, uh, we have a lot of retirees who, who are here, um, and then we have a lot of visitors who come who are military, and there's a lot of military-related museums, like you have the Veterans Memorial Museum, mm, yep. um, you have the Astronaut uh, Hall of Fame and the, Astro uh, and the uh, Space Museum, so there's a lot Valiant. of museums that kind of honor... Mm -hmm. Uh, military right. and, and people who were obviously astronauts and people that were in, uh, served in, in various uh, capacities. And so, you know, come on down. Enjoy I it. Know. And, and let's, speaking of that, when these visitors come down to see these wonderful special events that are granted through the Space Coast Office of Tourism, we thank you very much. They have a wonderful place to stay right here at the Beachside Hotel. So, Michelle, what's going on at your property here? Well, we're glad it's March and spring break is beginning. Uh, we are Duck Dive is now open seven days a week, which is wonderful. And noon. delicious, I might say. Oh, good. It was <laughs> open uh, noon to seven, uh, except on the weekends, so we'll see what's going on. Uh, tomorrow, we're going to have DJ Bar play from one to five, and then we're going to do our dive in movies tomorrow night. They are uh, family friendly. Very good. Movies, and, uh, you know, we've got some specials going on here at Duck Dive. And um, Planet Palooza is the 19th. We're going to have a stargazing event here at. Uh, on the 19th from 7 to 9. We try and, and the, do that And we month. notice all these kids that are now going yes. around the Lazy like River. The river. Yeah. It looks like they are I'm enjoying jealous. themselves and having a good time. We have yeah. lots of families here, and you know we that's see. what we are. As you can see, you know all the buckets open and over there in the beach. They've already dug through the sand a few times today. I know. So I'm going to make a <laughs> sand castle. We need to have a competition to see who can do the best one, I think. <laughs> okay. Well, we mentioned, yeah. we, we mentioned coming in. We just felt the energy in the right. air yep. with yep. March and everything. And so now I, I, I see it here at your hotel and your property so we thank you very much for being here and being part of our our tourism conversation we always love to host you here yeah you know. and again to give us the website and how they can uh, see all those wonderful pictures www.beachsidehotelcocobeach.com that's easy it okay. is sounds like a deal thank you okay all right so let's go back to uh laura lee laura lee I know that you are one of six people that are being looked at to be on the state, to be a state representative for the South Atlantic Fisheries Council and to be our state representative, that you're one of six people that may be selected. Is that okay for me to say? Here you I am live now. and I'm saying it now. <laughs> the it's, only one that should be considered. Public we're information. So, okay, so we're so excited because <laughs> I cannot think of anybody who's yep. more deserving than you to be on that council. And I can't wait for them to make that decision because you are the right person for that role. Definitely. Well, it's it's highly political. I, 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 I understand. It, it, yeah, but you can hang in there. And, and with the history of your family and what you have done, you created the, the industry the where it is today, you, you belong there. Well, Hands yeah, down. we did kind of start the rock shrimp industry. You did. Yes, you <laughs> did. Yes, you did. Yes. <laughs> not, not kind of. You did. <laughs> yep. Yep. I remember Thompson Trawlers too. That's right. When you yeah. had two, and you had two restaurants. Yep. We would yep. love to be represented by by yourself. So well, thank absolutely, you. absolutely. Well, I think I would bring a lot of different aspects because I can speak to the environmental community. Mm -hmm. Can speak to both sectors of the fishing community. A lot of recreational. Um, and charter boat captains supported me, and the scientific community supports me. The hospitality s supports me. So, 
Yeah. The only, only problem is I didn't make a thirty thousand dollar contribution <laughs> to the gubernatorial uh, campaign, and, and the, the, yeah, those right. count, you know. So, yeah, I hear but, you. We'll but see. Laura Lee, you we'll also, see whether you, science wins out or not. You also serve on our beach committee for the tourist development council, mm -hmm. and you were on also on the TDC previously for for many many years. Yeah. So we appreciate your service there. Right. But also, I know. You serve on the board of the Merritt Island Wildlife Refuge, which received a, a, a nice capital facilities grant from us. And you also were involved in the Birding Festival, which the Birding Festival in the past has received grants from us. So I don't know, maybe if you wanted to talk about those two sure. projects. Next year will be the 25th anniversary of the Space Coast Birding and Wildlife Festival. It's one of the largest birding and wildlife festivals in the United States. And it also has a photography component, too. We have a lot of... Um, professional wildlife photographers that participate. We have tour operators from all over the world that come and participate and uh, help lead field trips. So it's kind of a, a good thing. Like instead of having to spend like $5,000 to go to Panama to bird with Carlos Betancourt, who's one of the best birders in the world, you can come to the Space Coast Birding and Wildlife Festival for pennies compared to that and bird right. with Carlos and then decide if you want to go to Panama, Panama and bird with Carlos. And um, the Wildlife Refuge, the Merritt Island National Wildlife Refuge, third most visited wildlife refuge in the United States. Wow, I didn't even um, know that. It is That's home great. to more wow. species of endangered yep. plants and animals than mm -hmm. any other wildlife refuge in the continental United States. A third of Florida's manatee population lives there, and on and on and on. 22% uh, of the Indian River Lagoon, um, Mosquito Lagoon, Banana River, um, 122 miles of shoreline, all kinds of places to kayak. And we are in the process of building a brand new four million dollar visitor center out there. Awesome! And that's wow. that's why we got the grant from the TDC was to to uh, put the educational exhibits in this brand new state of the art. Well, okay, now where, where's that one going to be? Uh, where the old one is now? Yeah, yeah it's the in the same, oh, okay, uh, right, yeah. right, right. Okay, yeah, yeah. we're gonna um, we're gonna bulldoze the old one and use as much of the lumber and stuff out right. of the old one in the new building and. Cool. Yeah, that. all new exhibits. It's going to be fantastic. And Playa Linda has always been my go-to beach when I bring people. Oh my from, gosh, it's from, so, so pristine. Out of state yeah. guests and take them. They just go. I did not know we had. It's, right. a, it's the hidden treasure, Cape Canaveral National Seashore. Seashore. Is you know people just don't know about it, and it's you know it's very. I, I think it's what twelve or fifteen dollars a, a, a car, and you go in and you can right. park the whole day, and there's Beautiful. miles and miles of, of shoreline. I mean, it's you can if you can't find a piece of empty beach there you uh, won't find one anywhere in florida but it, it's parking, the, you everything. will well it's limited parking you know once they let in enough cars to fill up every parking place they, they you they sit stop. at the gate until somebody leaves and then they let another car in so yep. it's, it's the longest stretch of undeveloped beach on the east coast of florida and it Stunning. is fantastic it's a, if you have a family i have two little ones and that was the first thing when we moved to the space coast we did that weekend we went to play linda absolutely beautiful and you know because there's there's certain parts of beaches and other areas that maybe are a little more are busier and if you want a, a secluded natural state beach that's beautiful the water is perfect you have to go there and the shells i mean everything it's an absolute gorgeous yep. and it has been quite busy uh, as of late yeah very very busy uh, which is great the secret's yeah. out no hotels no condos just, i know just the, no the, 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 it looks like it did members. when ponce yeah. de leon landed here right. 400 years ago exactly right. well except not, for the space tower you know launch towers except for the rocket there. towers right. and, and it's important to mention that not not just playa linda but We've got 72 miles of beaches here. Beautiful yeah. beach. That's, that's longer than any other county in the state, I believe. Yep. Yes, yes. it is. Different experiences at each beach, which is awesome. That's the yeah. Thing. So if you want a secluded beach, or if you want if you want a beach that's got a lot of people, we have the, we have wide a choice for you. you. Yeah. We got it all. We on the southern end too, it's almost as good as Playa Linda because there's just a few houses that's down true. there, yeah. and, that, and that's the most significant nesting yeah. beach for loggerhead sea turtles in the world. We right. have like. 20,000 sea turtles that nest there every year. You can mm -hmm. go on a sea turtle walk at night, you know, guided tour, and yep. watch the turtle come out of the surf and dig her hole and lay her eggs. It's and, phenomenal. And we just started turtle season, and it goes through uh, through the end of October, and we are the number one turtle nesting uh, location in, in the North American continent, and wow. so it's, it's incredible. And the Archie Carr 
National Seashore is, is there, and uh, you have Spesser Holland Park and a few other. Further south, you got Sebastian Inlet. So yeah, the southern part of the county is often overlooked because you know everybody wants to go to Cocoa Beach or where the where we the action it. is, and I don't blame them because it's a lot of fun. But some of these other places are just there. They are amazing. Yeah, yeah. And what's great too is that the is that the hotels are very cognizant yeah. and very yeah, about the lighting situation oh, yeah. because yeah. you've Definitely. got to keep your lights yeah. down. Yep. Everybody's got to use right. the, the special yeah. lighting. So yep. it and we have the yeah. we have yeah. the little window decals in on our suites so that are over. That's nice. Oh, that tells because people we have some guests get really upset. Go. We have yeah. very little light. Yeah. You need to have more light on the balconies. I'm going, no. And that's they got to be so careful. So we put the stickers up so real the decals they know. Yeah, yeah in but, a real habitat. Yep. Yeah, and there's a beautiful education center down there, too. It's part of the Brevard County Environmentally Endangered Lands Program. We actually have um, three three beautiful education centers. The, the one, the Barrier Island Center, which is right on the beach, down on the south beaches, is gorgeous. And there's lots of trails you can walk on and... And it's fabulous. It's beautiful. Wow. Now, speaking of trails and everything, I mean, we have a lot of the, um, the like the enchanted forest, and we have a lot of the the parks that have trails that go through them. <laughs> and um, the one that I was thinking of in down south is Archie Carr, I guess it is, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, there's just beautiful trails all through there as yeah. well. There's uh, Coconut Point Hammock, and there's three or four um, environmentally endangered lands programs down there that have trails that go through the maritime hammock. And you can walk from the beach to the river and see all the changes in the habitat. And then, you know, speaking of trails, we got a big trail, too, oh, in yes. the north part of the county. Yes. We oh, have the... The, the coast to coast or Florida coast to coast bike trail yep. goes right yep. through Titusville and you can ride your bike out to Playa Linda Beach. You can actually ride your bike all the way from St. Petersburg Beach to Playa Linda Beach. Isn't that and, amazing? Yeah, that sections of it are still yet to be done, but yeah. for the most part, most of the trail sections are done and eventually you'll be able to off highway ride your bike from one coast of florida to the other it, it, wow. yeah i mean that's a, there's some really cool aspects to that too you can take a tour um you can get out and there's a place where you can get out and you can pick like raspberries and uh, and uh mims. You know, fruit, yeah. Yeah, yeah. fruit uh <laughs> on your way i mean it, you know there's all kinds of guided tours through there so it's if you you know if you're not really clear on where you want to go you can hook up with one of these tour groups and and they'll they'll take you all around and show you everything. I'd, I'd like to remind our listeners, if I may, that, that with, you're sitting out of state right now and you're looking to come down here. Why not? We're sitting here at, at Duck Dive Bar here at Beachside Hotel and Suites. A beautiful view. The, the <laughs> drinks are delicious. And everything that you're hearing about the different parks, go on SpaceCoastFunGuide.com. We have all the parks listed there. You can actually go through. There's photographs. You get a little bit of a, some information on what we have to offer, the bike trails. You can book your hotel. You can plan your, your whole trip. So get on the website and get down here. I mean, it's, it's one, Come thing, on to down. Listen, one yeah. thing to listen to it, but get here. Yeah, the other, the other thing is, too, the list of in, your, in, in the Space Coast Fun Guide is the list of all the cultural activities yes. that are going on. Yeah. Absolutely. Because it is amazing when people come in, you know, yeah, they love the beach. They love the Space Center. They love, you know, what we've got to offer. But they also want to know, where's an art show? Where's a museum? You know, what, what plays are going on? You know, and we've talked before about the, the wonderful uh, cast that we have of people that are so well versed and not only acting but singing it's like going to broadway that's right. i mean I, yeah. I i feel it I, I love it it's really really good yeah, so you we have, have a lot of great performers down here it's amazing I mean, of course the weather is beautiful who wouldn't want to live here so right. I mean, we get a lot of people from new york who maybe were in the theater programs up there and now they're down here and we're, we benefit from from their talents it's it's amazing and the music scene here i mean there's a lot of places you can That's go true. and listen to live music yep. and now that we're you know hopefully getting through this you know i don't even want to say the word but the the, the c word but once we're getting past this you know now they're starting to do live performances again so you can go yep. to all these different bars and restaurants and, and catch live music just about any night of the week listen we're being safe we're being careful but space Coast is open for business yes. so yes. come on absolutely get here absolutely. and, it's, it's, and it's, when you're coming in Fly into Orlando, Orlando Melbourne yes. International Airport, where we gem. were just three right weeks ago. Yep. What a yeah. gem, that hope. Yep. I mean, yeah, that, I mean you know, Delta and Americans serve that, and they, they serve it from their hubs. So no matter where you are in the U.S., if you, if you can get on a Delta flight through Atlanta, it'll, there's a flight that comes from Atlanta to, to Melbourne. And then the same thing with their American Airlines, their hubs in Charlotte. So if you're anywhere where there's an American Airline flight, 
you go to their hub and then you hop right down here to, directly to Melbourne and you don't have to drive across, you know, uh, uh, across from, from Orlando. It's a lot closer. You're, you're out in minutes. We, when we were at the airport, yeah. we saw these people coming off, and they had the biggest grins. They weren't horrified because now they got to go through baggage claim, and they're you know, going to take three hours to no. find their luggage. Yep. Nice. They knew that their yeah. vacation had started even before. We talk, we talk about all the time about the, the, the path that they take and our, our view when you're up in the skies before yeah. they land, right? Yeah. So your vacation starts while you're up there, and it's completely stress-free. And that's, to me... Long before I lived here in the Space Coast, when I lived in Orlando, this was my vacation. I'd come over here every weekend to the Space Coast. I went to the port. I went to the beaches. And this right here is such a stress-free environment. It's fun. And that's why yes. everybody not only comes here, they stay here. Did it not win an award as, yeah, the, as the most scenic? Mo most yes, scenic most airport. Scenic. Yeah. scenic landing, landing yeah. of any yeah. airport. Yeah, Yeah, you don't want to land in an, an, another maybe more, you know, another area where you're, now you're completely tense. Am I going to lose my kids in this? I mean, this, 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 especially right now, they do a heck of a job at yeah. Atlanta, Melbourne yeah. International. And, and they got a Tiki Hut bar right yeah, in the right terminal the where you come <laughs> off yeah. the plane. <laughs> you can't beat it. Nope. It sounds like you know a lot about that. Oh, oh yes. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. And then I you know get about your those car, Tiki Hut <laughs> bars. And you drive to Beachside. <laughs> or you can take a car. Exactly. Or you take an Uber, whatever it is that you want to come do. To That's what we relax. told them. So you're right. You get off the plane and you come right here. You got it. To and, this and, hotel. And they, yep. just as a reminder, I know we said it before, Beachside Hotel and Suites provides you everything. I mean, again, I'm a yeah. family man. I got right. kids. You can get your bicycles. You can get your buggies. You can get your bill, your your, um, your boogie boards, your sand boards, castles, castles, everything. And I'm sitting here watching these folks over here as we're sitting here grabbing their tubes, getting in the lazy river. And I said, why am I working right now? I need to be in that lazy river. I know. I know. <laughs> you know, we put some ducks in that yeah, live race, ones. We right? put some, Yeah. And you can go over with the duck around in six and a half minutes. That's how fast the current is. Six and a half minutes. <laughs> okay, wait a minute. Ducky. What? We, ha we, we put little our rubber little rubber duckies, duckies in. Oh, oh rubber I know. Duckies. Real we duckies. I it thought and you meant you could swim with the ducks. <laughs> yeah. I was going, what? That's, that's no, a night no, thing. No, that's a night <laughs> thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we dropped some turtles. ducks in to see, see how fast it would go so we could time and say the flow on it. And in six and a half minutes, the little ducks will go all the way around the pool. And, and I love the fact that you do the, the dive-in movies. So, yes. I mean, how cool is that? Like, you're just hanging in the pool with your maybe a, a drink or whatnot, and right. you got the TVs right there, and like me, I'll, once I'm in the water, you're not getting me out. I turn pruny because I'm I'm in there for the night. Michelle, do you know? Can you off the top of your head? I'm looking at all these people around the lazy river, and they look awfully pale to me, like they haven't been in the sun. So you've got a lot of northern visitors that are down here right now. Do you know what from what state mostly? Uh, we have some from Indiana, and we have some from uh, Massachusetts. We have some from Texas, and uh, we have some from Utah. Listen, wow. I'm Irish. Why are, you, why are you calling out the pale guy? I'm pale Man. myself. Don't be <laughs> hitting <laughs> and, and to top it off, we have a sports team in. First really? time they've been here, college, which college hasn't been doing a whole lot, private college, and it's all girls, and they've been down here playing uh, softball. Oh, great. Wow. That's and, great. And uh, they're just really enjoying themselves, and they brought their family along with them. So well, it turned into you know, you know, well, It's interesting week you long. mentioned sports because sports is huge here in, in the Space Coast. We have – U-Triple-S-A Stadium, they do baseball and softball events all year long. Uh, you know, a lot of people who have, uh, you know, they're on various teams in other parts of the country will come here for tournaments. And, you know, we've got facilities all up and down the, the, the uh, county that are really incredible from soccer, lacrosse, anything outdoor, you, cool. can, you can do that here. Flag football. Um, so, softball. You know, yeah. But, you know, that that's another thing Swimming, is the partnership. Is the, we, we always talk about relationships and partnership. And, and for the uh, for your sports programs that you have that you guys um, definitely give grant money and things to for sports, you're a big player in that. Yeah. But, again, it doesn't. it's not just your office. You have partnerships with all these, with the school board. You have partnerships with different organizations. And it's it's that kind of the teamwork. Parks Department. I mean, right. every, everybody, yeah. You it's that state. kind of teamwork that makes this happen. Absolutely. Public and private schools, I mean, be able to right. use their facilities as well. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, so you do a good job. You do we were also job. very big with the cruise industry. Uh, yeah. I was going to yeah. say that. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. when you were talking about the scenic look, of coming in with an with the airplane what about the scenic look that you have when you're here on our uh, really in our port beautiful port easy in easy yep. out but when you're on that ship and you're leaving our port there's That's other incredible. places that you go to and it's 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 a rust bucket you just see you know they have all the rust stuff there uh i hate to say it, but it's true industrial here, areas yeah it's a yeah. thank you it's a better word for it industrial area but here <laughs> you go out and what do you see you see the beautiful restaurants that we have all that are lined up along the the harbor area and Action. then jetty park uh, 
absolutely. And the Space Center. And the, well, yeah, absolutely. It's an the space attraction. The, the, it is the, an attraction the in itself. Tower. The I mean. Cove, which is the, the yeah. area of the port, is another attraction. And so, absolutely. you know, I know a lot of people love to come here and just get right on the ship, but you don't have to do that because you can actually come to our ports and you've got helicopter rides, you've got Exploration Tower, which is seven stories of fun. You've got the restaurants right there on the water. You've got Wild Ocean Sea. I mean, you got everything out there. Yeah. So it, it really is so many. To me, I love that. There's so many levels of this vacation. And to make it easy, you can stay in a hotel, and then they, you can leave your car there while you go on the exactly. cruise. They'll, they'll take yes. you on a bus and yes. make it Michelle easy. Unlo- yeah. Unload your luggage for you, and yep. all you oh, got to do is just get on the yep. ship. Royalty. Yeah. Those war- wonderful park and cruise passengers, and then yep. those, we can, you know, we even... Believe it or not, we have hotels that provide transportation from the airports. Right. Yep. right. Just so, you know, we can not be competing with each other. What we're doing is competing with Orlando or other areas to grab those those passengers and, I, and have them come stay with us. And I, you know, and I, I don't know why anybody would fly into Orlando, stay in Orlando, and then drive over in to the go morning on, to go on a cruise ship. Exactly. No, fly in, fly in right. Orlando or maybe fly even into Melbourne. Melbourne. You know, stay at the beach, beach, have a nice dinner, walk on the beach. Yeah. Then you get up leisurely in the morning, exactly. and there's already transportation planned for you. And you get right on the cruise ship, and you, ha- you know, you're it's just so much more relaxing to do it well, that way. Yeah. Come on, Peter. Uh, when you're staying in in Orlando and you're in a hotel, look out your window. What do you see? Yeah, yeah. And then cars, stay at, right? You know what I mean? <laughs> and it's just it's industrial and n- nothing exciting. Right. Buildings everywhere. But come here, stay on the beach. Right. Uh, your, your vacation starts early. Yeah, I mean, you're already making memories and having lots of fun. That's it. And before that, you even get on the ship. You, you, and memories is it. And you right. want to have, you want to look back and, and every aspect of it, especially the kids. You right. want it to be fun and, and, yeah. and, and stress-free. And that, that's, that's the and space. We're, and we're hoping that that's going to come back pretty soon. We're oh. hoping maybe by summer, right, that we might yeah, have some it cruise looks like ship summer. business. It looks like there'll be some, some business in summer. They're already booking cruises, you know, now. And so they're having to do some testing. But, uh, you know, hopefully... By this, by July, we'll start seeing some some uh, cruises with people on them, and then you know, going into the fall for sure, we'll be full, you know, full bore by the time the fall rolls around. But you know, it's been a it's been a long trek for them. I, I will say that as an industry, they've probably got hit a little bit harder than than a lot of uh, other businesses. But they'll be back. You know, they have millions and millions of dollars, in some cases, billions of dollars of uh, equipment invested. And, you know, the other thing about the cruise industry, a lot of people don't know this, um, liquid natural gas, LNG, Mm -hmm. is the new way that cruise ships are being built. They're going to be required, everybody's going to be required to convert over to this LNG. So what what are they doing? They're building new ships, right? Rather than retrofit the old ones, they're building new ones. So we're getting one of the first... LNG ships here. It's going to be the second largest ship in the world, the Mardi Gras. Wow. It's Carnival, Carnival, Carnival Mardi Gras. Yeah. They've got, they built the, actually Terminal 3. They actually built the terminal for it to house it because it's so big. It's massive. I think, awesome. think 6,000 people on, on the ship. And that's it's, just, it's a floating city. Just passengers, wow. not even yeah, crew. There's more, people, yeah. there's more people on the ship than there are in the city around it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but, but it's incredible. But, but what's going to happen over the next couple of years is you're going to see these large ships coming out with LNG. And they're going to be coming to Port Canaveral because they are already have the infrastructure in place to handle it. And so, uh, you know, it's going to be a great opportunity for passengers to be in a, a new ship, a clean ship, and um, and just you know, state of the art everything. It's uh, one, you know, the Mardi Gras. They're going to have a, a roller coaster that goes around the ship. I've oh never heard gosh. of anything like this. They're putting a roller coaster on the ship. So. And, you know, for, for anybody that wants that, that kind of thrill-seeking adventure, that's that's a, a great opportunity. Because you know that roller coaster is also going to go out, oh, yeah, like, over the water exactly. part. <laughs> that's a whole other no, concept no. because that's a <laughs> moving <laughs> roller coaster. I mean, roller coasters always move, but the yeah. roller coaster itself it, is moving yeah. while you're on it. That, wow, that's a whole other wow. degree of... I don't know. That's Vertigo adventure. You know, <laughs> that's right? an adventure. Right, like, wouldn't it be yeah. exciting if we could do a three, two, one liftoff from the Mardi Gras? Wouldn't that be? Oh, wouldn't something? that be nice? Yes. Yeah. yeah. I want to get you on a roller coaster. Yeah, if you do that, Peter, Peter, Peter may calls. be able to make yeah, that we'll happen. Yeah, we'll try to make some phone calls on that. I think we can make that happen. You know what? <laughs> I'm assuming be, they have a tiki hut bar on it. They're going to be looking for people who want to come out there. So yeah, you know, we can make that happen. Yeah, absolutely. That'd be that'd be. That'd be great. Those ships you are fantastic. And you know the cruise industry is going to come yeah. roaring back. Oh, yeah. Roaring. Oh, yeah. 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 Well, I want to say we have people and groups that are booking October of next year for cruises. So, yeah. I mean, oh, they, are that, yeah. they're ready. they are that uh, confident that they're going to be coming back oh, and all that yeah, stuff. I mean, but by I mean, 2022, you're going to you're going to be not only back to business, but the capacity, like I said, with the bigger ship, the capacities are going to be much, much larger. So, yes, the absolutely. Anybody who um, is a is a 
serious cruiser and uh, has, uh, has you know uh, experience doing that um, they'll probably be on first but then there's going to be a lot of people that have never experienced a cruise ship and I tell you what, this is going to be the time to do it. If you've never done it before, uh, this is the time. So tell me, uh, we've talked a little bit before about because TUI. So TUI is going to be flying yeah, in here so soon. Yeah, so listen to this. This is great. Um, it, for, for those listeners who may be over in Europe, uh, TUI, T-U-I, they're, they're a, the, one of the world's largest tour operators. They are going to be doing direct service from London to Melbourne Airport. Okay, so we're going to awesome. truly be an international airport. Um, they're talking about starting with about 100,000 passengers a year. The flights start in April of 2022, so not right around the corner, uh, about a year from now. And, um, and you know, for TUI, they, they, have, they operate all over Europe, all over, really all over the world. But if you, you know, whether you be in Germany or Spain or anywhere else in, in that area, if you can get to London, then you can then you can hop on a, a direct flight direct. to Melbourne, Florida, direct. Direct. Uh, and be, you know before you know it, you'll have your, your toes in the sand and you'll be experiencing uh, some amazing things. But the other cool thing about uh, about Tui is they own Morella Cruises. That's what I was going to say. And they're going to yes. be porting a cruise ship at the at the, at the uh, port. So you know you could fly over here. You could take a cruise. You could you know get a car hire as they call it a car rental and get a car you can you can drive to orlando and do the theme parks then come back and stay at the beach whatever you want to do i mean everything's right there so uh i mean uh, we're excited about that and uh we're actually i can't wait to go over to london and, and talk to them some more about it because um it's one of my favorite places i spent a lot of time in my career over there and uh, just wonderful, wonderful people, but we love to have them. We love to host them here in Florida, and nobody's going to do it better than Melbourne and, and, that's right. and the Space Coast. Got, got it. And their vacations anyway are longer than we have here, yeah, yeah, so absolutely. they come over for a long period of time and yeah. spend a lot of money. So they're very great for our economy, and you know what? We need that. We need that British influence when it comes through. You know, absolutely. you know how I love, I love. London. Think I love the this. Brits. Yeah, it well, we yeah. all do. Absolutely. It's very interesting. I'm, I'm just looking at some analytical information. Uh, top countries that our listeners are from are Ireland, Canada, Germany, and United United Kingdom. There you all go. Right. So yeah. that's wow. perfect. Yeah, yeah. So for you know, for those that are in Ireland or Germany, you know, just hop a hop a quick flight into into London and then uh, pick up a two week flight and you'll be here. And Tell my Irish brothers to get down here. There we go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and when you get here, you have to go to Dixie Crossroads. Yes, of course. Yes. Have to go there. Yes, yeah, absolutely. You have to you know spend at least a week here. You, you know, my six-year-old, he, he still he talks about that all the time. Because you go, and before you even eat, they got little fish that you can feed. And that is such a cool thing. I mean, again, you talk about an attraction before an attraction. You have something to keep them entertained. It's not just like some restaurants where you're just kind of sitting down and immediately on your phone. There's so much to do here. And that's why another thing about Dixie Crossroads that we absolutely... And ever since I was a kid, coming from when I was a kid, I lived oh, in Daytona. Oh, it's an institution. It it's really is. That's, for, it's yeah. world, world famous. And not only world famous, but also Laura Lee. I mean, I know when, when I was with the Space Coast Office of Tourism, and I'm sure it happens now when travel writers come in, the first person that we want them to meet is you to talk about our nature activities and things that are going on because you're the perfect interview. You know, as I always mention to people, I say she knows every bark on a tree. She knows every fish in the ocean. She, she knows more about, she knows, uh, more about, you know, I know. Yeah, than any of us know. And right? there's a great story there when, you know, we used to take people out on the kayaks and you, you would lead us in, um, not lead us into temptation, but you'd lead us into the into the wonderful <laughs> river. Whoops. But there was a manatee that um, did not only have the one fin. There was a what? dolphin. Dolphin. Had, I'm yeah, sorry. A okay. dolphin that had had numbers right. stamped in its fin, and it was always in the same place. Right, and, and you yeah. always it seemed like yep. you could hit the side of yeah, the, the, the kayak, dolphin would come. and the dolphin would you come. You had a so. pet dolphin. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and awesome. it would come. <laughs> wow, that's See, cool. my memory. Yeah, yeah my memory's like lost, flipper. but they are smart yeah. though, right? Very the cool. dolphins are quite, oh, quite smart. smart. Oh, yeah. Yes, they are. Yeah. Yeah, if you, yeah totally. I, I've always wanted to train to do the trick with the ball on the nose that like you see, you know, like at SeaWorld or something. So that, yeah, <laughs> I thought cool. that was seals. I'm, yeah, I wish you'd get seals? back to work. No. Yeah. Oh, well, I'll tell you. So what, what's everybody's plan That's for this weekend? I mean, it's going to be a beautiful weekend. Everybody got uh, something happening besides work? Got <laughs> some open see. time that you're going to do and enjoy the beach well, or go golfing? or. My son turned six today. 
So happy well, birthday happy to Jacob, birthday. My, my Jacob. pride, yeah, one of my two pride and joys. So he asked me to take him to the Brevard Zoo, oh, uh, 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 which, by the way, is a world class. Yeah, absolutely, one of the, it was rated one of the top ten zoos in the United States. Yep. I mean, it's always it's always acclaimed. Every time there comes out awards, they always win win the awards because they're so. They, it's like walking through a nature preserve, but but it's awesome. You can interact, and, and you could kayak through there. Kayak the giraffes come right giraffe. up to you. I mean, that's crazy. And, and I don't know if Jacob's been listening to TDC meetings or not, but he also asked me, no kidding, this morning if we had an aquarium we can go to. I said soon, <laughs> soon. soon. Yeah. So soon. I don't know if he's reading my notes that I have or what, but he's he's he's. he's <laughs> yeah, so yeah, well, what I, is I, the I, update on that? Yeah, on I, that. Mean, there, I, know, I should <laughs> say that I'm training my grandson <laughs> to be a a uh, space ghost fun guy sales rep. There you go. That doesn't surprise me. Yes. No, Keep I mean, they're still, you know, they're, we're still working on the aquarium. Um, you know, it got, obviously, last year was a rough year, and it, it probably put it a little bit behind, but now they're back, you know, hopefully now they'll get back on track. Um, they've they've uh, raised about $22 million so far. They need about 80. So they're getting, you know, they're starting out again, and they'll get there. Um, probably 23 will be ground, groundbreaking. Uh, and then open 24 is what they're, what they're hoping for. And tell wow. us that location. It's going to be, actually, it's going to be right at the port. So yeah. yes. all the things that, you know, wow. John talked about earlier, you can go there, have, have a meal, go, go spend half a day or more or longer at the, at the uh, aquarium. Um, my understanding is the way they're going to build it, you can go in, they're going to have, uh, they're going to have experiences where you get really, truly immersed in water with different uh, uh, sea creatures. You can also kayak off of into the river from there because the port, the backside of the port sits on the river. So yep. the aquarium's gonna sit on that backside there. So it's gonna be incredible. I mean, it's gonna be some, you know, and they have like a, no other aquarium. They have an environmental part of them as well where they give back. I mean, I love that kind of thing. It, yeah. It's supporting yeah, no, it's the gonna be yeah. Yeah. It's gonna oh, be, yeah. A, yeah, they're gonna, they're gonna rescue, you know, do red turtle rescue and all kinds of other you know, dolphin rescue, all of that. So, yeah. It's so important. Yeah. I'm so sure important. they're going to do great things. They're probably going to do some oyster beds or clam beds. Yeah. Or, you know, all that kind of stuff. A lot yeah. of education Spatial in there for things, kids right, and things right, of that nature. Right. It's going to be or it's hands be on. You'll be able It'll to. Be, you, can exactly. be, you can bring your family down and you can plant mangroves right. and put short, short, you know, grass along yeah, the shoreline yeah. or, you know, do all kinds of um, conservation projects hands right. on with your family. That's I cool. love it. It is. Well, th and thank you guys for being here. Our we appreciate your input. Our we pleasure. appreciate you promoting the Space Coast and bringing all these wonderful visitors so that they get to see our area. Yeah. And Laura Lee, we just wish you much success. Um, and, and, and hopefully we will be represented by you because you are the person that could make Definitely. things happen. And yes. we'd like to see that. Huh? We'd like to you see have that. It would be my honor to represent the state if that happens. Yeah, yes. well, we shall see. So, anyway, so next week we are going to be out over in, um, in Titusville on top of Beach Wave Beachwear. They have an observation deck that overlooks the water and overlooks the launch pads. Great so, launch it's going to be a great interview to talk about um how many how many locations does he have now eight this well as far as he has multiple stores so yeah. as far as beach wave locations this is number six and, and let me tell you titusville has already come out by the numbers um that you talk about play linda beach the amount of people that are coming through there his titusville store is probably his busiest store right now yeah and uh, what's yeah. it going to be exciting is april 22nd i believe is the date that we have our manned launch scheduled right and we are going to be this place is going to be crazy good yep looking forward to that he had mentioned at the last launch that he wasn't open yet but they allowed him to put a tent out yep. and he said that that was the he did more business in that tent that he did in his store wow. in, in 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 Cocoa Beach and that's because you know he's in a great location yeah. he's got Fantastic fabulous location. stuff and the location is going to be unbelievable but so yeah. I'm excited because we're going to be on top of that roof overlooking and, everything yeah. it's going to be really nice there so. is a lot is there a tiki hut bar up there, <laughs> there yes yes there, yes, there is. is yes there is there's, I don't know if it's a tiki hut but there's a bar up there, there, right there, there, there. Okay. We'll, okay. we'll have one but there, there's a lot of Titusville pride because Titusville really is a fantastic destination it's it's again another gem we have a lot of gems within this county we do. and I give a, a, a lot of credit to Peter and to our, our marketing committee and yes. community, how you guys focus on all these. You're able to highlight them all individually while tying it all together at the same time. Yep. Uh, um, Titusville is a fantastic destination, and uh, we're really excited for that show next week. To that, That's going to be one heck of a launch view, let me tell you, from the roof of that building. Oh, yeah. Uh, wow. And awesome. And so we yeah. want everybody to know that you want more information on the Space Coast, you can definitely go to um, Peter's website, which is 
uh, visit spacecoast.com. That's right. And if you want information on the wonderful uh, meal that you can have at Dixie Crossroads, you can go to dixiecrossroads.com, right? And if you want information on us and on Space Coast Fun Guide. And free coupons. And free coupons. And you want to, again, map. we're asking people to send us information about the area, like their memories and things that they really liked about the Space Coast. So that's at info at spacecoastfunguide.com. Or visit our website, spacecoastfunguide.com. Check it. that out. You know, I get phone calls all the time. Uh, I, I got one. I, I mentioned this before not too long ago. We have a recipe in there for key lime pie. And I had somebody call me like I wrote the recipe asking me how to make it. So I'm glad <laughs> that, that our, our, our viewers and our listeners are, are very active in what we have in yep. there. So like Bonnie said, if you got questions um, all the time, I had somebody I mentioned to Michelle not too long ago called us because he was looking to book a hotel here. Right. And so we're always we're, we're welcome to, to help you. So just get here to the Space Coast. It, you'll love it here. And Many of you will stay here, for sure. And, and if yes. you've been wondering what that noise in the background is, it's going on right now. That is the machine. very busy daiquiri machine at the Duck Bar <laughs> here funny. at the Beachside Hotel. Yes. Thank it you, Laurel. It is. We like yes. it. Well, thank we you both. It, yes. Thanks, thank, everybody. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you. We look forward to seeing you again, and we will see you next week.